Well, what's happening, boys? Hugh Halter coming from the Elkhorn Saloon for our final time together before the summer is out. So, uh, man, it's been great, fantastic experience for me. Um, Men's Retreat was awesome. Getting to know you guys better was awesome this year. Uh, you guys got to go back and meet in the building again, got to come together, uh, had some great church gatherings. So feels like the momentum is high, and uh, I just encouraged you last time not to take the summer off, but to really use the summer to keep rolling and keep uh, hanging with the guys that you've been with. But we're not going to have anything formal, no more videos for you for quite a while. So um, you get a little breather from that. You're going to be on your own. But we ain't worried. You got the word of God. You got each other. You got the church gatherings. You got all sorts of stuff. So hopefully it'll be a great summer. Um, obviously, I had the entire book of Acts to try to pick a last message for you guys. And I went to what has been a bit of a uh, meditation for me for a while. It's uh, chapter 27 and 28 of the book of Acts. I think there's some... Uh, totally righteous stuff in here for us as we go. But this is the story of Paul on his way to Rome. And if you remember, uh, the, the scriptures are not stories of like Bible guys, like superstars. These are real life stories of real men. And we know they existed. And we know these stories actually happened. And uh, so try to put yourself in a little bit of a frame of mind to try to put yourself in Paul's seat on the ship um, he's actually trying to get to Rome. It was part of almost like Jesus was trying to get uh, to Jerusalem. Paul was always trying to get to Rome because he uh, he thought that if he could somehow get to the seat of power and get maybe a hearing in front of uh, Caesar, in front of uh, the top dogs, that somehow if he could convert the political powers, he thought maybe uh, the world would be changed. We all know that that doesn't work, right? And, uh, and so what we find is that Paul's uh, trying to get there, and he can't get there the way that he wants. All of a sudden, things are against him, almost as if the Lord doesn't want him to get what he wants. So take note of that, guys, because um, we're going to talk a lot about the sovereignty of God over us. And uh, so Paul thinks that he knows the plan. He thinks he knows the strategy. He thinks he's got marching orders. And so it begins in chapter uh, 27, in verse 13, When a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw the opportunity. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force. So remember, it starts with a gentle wind. And before long, a wind of hurricane force called a northeaster swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. Remember, he's trying to get upwind. That's the way to Rome, but he can't go into the wind. So we gave it, uh, gave way to it, and we're driven along. As we passed to the lee of the small island of Cauda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure, so the men hoisted it aboard, and they passed ropes underneath the ship in order to hold its hold together because they were afraid that it would run aground on the, on the sandbars of Sirtis. And they lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. It's kind of interesting. There's no other place in Scripture where you get like this detailed um, picture of what they were dealing with. And it's going to become really obvious why the writer of Acts is giving you such detail. Um, so just hang with that. We, we took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. And then on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. With their own hands so kind of get the picture here guys they are uh, for these guys the ship is their way to Rome and they're into the headwinds and so they start by going okay we may not make it we're not sure we might still make it there and so cargo goes and then uh, tackle what do you use tackle for guys you use tackle because you believe you're going to live another day and you're going to need some ability to um, make it through and so their tackle like to throw your imagine if you're out with some guys and a storm comes upon you you're out in the east bay in the beautiful waters of the east bay and ron's got you in his boat and you're you're fishing you're you're doing well but all of a sudden you're thinking oh my gosh ron we may not make it back to cpc we got some headwinds 
And Ron gets to such a distraught level, he said, hey, uh, throw the tackle over. That would be when Ron goes, we're not worried about tomorrow, bro. We're just worried about today. And so these guys are losing, if you will, a sense of the future because these winds are so violent. And when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, the storm continued raging. It says, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Yeah, crazy. All hope of being saved. And after they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before the guys and he said, you should have taken my advice and blah, blah, blah. He kind of gives them a little bit of a tongue lashing. But then he says this. He says, last night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar and God has graciously, graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told, told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. <laughs> um, so the tackle's overboard. The guys have given up all hope of even being saved. Paul says, guys, don't worry. Um, God's got a plan for me, which means he has a plan for you. And the plan for you is that you're not going to die. So just hang in there. But, by the way, we are going to probably shipwreck and, uh, you know, barely make it but we are going to make it so a couple of things i just want to like throw at you the the ship for paul and these guys was their way through um it was uh really the way you travel the way you got what you were going to get and for us it's probably and i think about just the typical way you and i might think about what is really preserving our way into the future and it's probably our health our job our reputation these would be big things like we can't do what we're supposed to do unless we have those things. Um, and all of a sudden, consider those things are taken away. You've given up all hope. And all of a sudden, uh, God, through an angel, says, don't worry, you're going to make it, but you're going to lose everything else. So I was actually sharing this with some church leaders in New York City just a few days back. And many of them are denominational leaders and they recognize that the church as they know it is not coming back. And, uh, and you know, the church for them was their vehicle, it was their ship. It's the way that you, like, take care of the world and take care of people. All of a sudden, the organized church may not be there. But th the point being is that to God, people are the church. You guys are actually the church. And so even if we went through another terrible, you know, set of forest fires or, a pandemic. I hope we've all learned by this point, guys, that there is nothing that stops the sovereignty of God in our life um, except God. And although winds may come up, we see in this story, again, the winds are also a part of God's sovereignty. He's slowing Paul down. Okay. Um, it might be that there's a lesson for all these guys. We're going to find out pretty soon here that these guys put all their trust in the, the, the Greek God, Zeus and Apollos and all this stuff, and, uh, and they're, they're being put in a position where their only way forward is to begin to put their faith in God. And so I know some of you guys have been traveling with us. Um, you may not even go to CPC. Maybe you've been invited by some of the guys, and maybe you're leaning in. The Jesus part of the story has been making sense. But, um, you know, the best thing I can say to you on this last time before the summer is, is I hope you're starting to realize that... Um, that Jesus makes a difference in all sorts of aspects of our life, from our marriage to our money to our leadership to um, inner issues of being able to control sin to whatever it is. But at the end of the day, the real story of Jesus for each one of us is that he has a sovereign plan. And when, when you begin to get at the sovereign plan, it's when you've, you say, look, I'm not putting my trust in any other thing. There's no vehicle by which I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put trust in my health I'm not going to put trust in the fact that i got a great job right now or a great wife or that my kids are doing great or my education, whatever it is. At some point, you have to stop and go, all of that may have to be thrown overboard at some point along the journey of my life, but I will still have the, the ordained uh, plan of God for my life. There's a scripture that says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is God who guides their steps. And that is in the middle of a storm on a boat is great news. That not in a storm should still be great news. Like we shouldn't have to wait till, you know, we think 
we're about to lose all hope of life for us to go, you know, it's okay. God's got a plan. So Paul's trying to give these guys some hope. Most of these guys are trying to get uh, Paul up and get him in jail. They're not really on his side, but he's won them over in some ways, as we see. And uh, so the shipwreck actually happens. So the guys are floating around. They, they wash up on this little island called Malta. And at Malta, it says that the people, for the very first point along this terrible, terrible journey, it says the, the Maltese people were kind to them. And they stoked the fire because the, they knew the guys were really cold. They hadn't eaten for, it says, a couple weeks. So they're barely, they're on their last leg. And these uh, people on Malta just take care of them. And Paul is in there stoking the fire with the rest of them. And a snake reaches up and grabs Paul by the arm and bites him. And uh, you can imagine how Paul feels at the end of all this. He gets, you know, he's finally getting warm. And maybe, you know, the boys are like, all right, I know we're enemies, but gosh, we made it, guys. That's awesome. God's word is true. And the guys are maybe starting to believe that, like, and up comes a viper out of, I'm sure if there was ever a time that Paul was tempted to drop, you know, a word, it would have been right there. But uh, what happens is that everybody looks at it and starts to judge Paul like, hey, he just got bit, so he must be cursed of the gods. And they're waiting for Paul to like keel over dead. And Paul doesn't. He just kind of keeps stoking the fire and going, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good, guys. I'm, uh, I'm good. I'm going to make it. And so they go, well, it must not be cursed. He must be a god. That was their belief. And so a conversion process starts to happen, even with the Maltese people. And there's a couple of days that they're there, and Paul begins to heal people. And that's literally the beginning of the church in Greece. And uh, so, again, you start to get this picture. They're going through this terrible, terrible storm. And God's got this preordained plan uh, that he's going to begin to save some people along the way. Okay? So just kind of consider that. Um, Now, at the end of this little story, it says that they did get into a ship and start sailing towards Rome. And the ship, interestingly enough, had these two statues that were carved into the boat. And it was uh, called Castor and Pollux. These were two Greek gods that they put on the boat because uh, back in those days, again, their belief in the, the Greek gods were really important. And Obviously, people were shipwrecking at sea all the time, so they carved these, uh, these images. They were Zeus's sons, and they were known as the ones that would make your way through the seas safe. And so men would, uh, they would do, like they would give money, they would do all sorts of incantations to try to get these two gods on their side. So all of a sudden, Paul is now sailing towards Rome in a, in a boat with idols carved all over him. And it's another, you know, kind of reminder that um, the superstitions that we all have, um, some of the weird, even Christian beliefs that we have, like like a weird Christian belief would be if I go to church, my life will be blessed. That would be like a superstition. Uh, Other people will go, well, if I'm good, then I'll probably get good return to me. That that would be like a superstition, karma. Um, And so what we see in the story is that God doesn't care. He doesn't care how he's going to get Paul to Rome. His plans are now. It's time to go, Paul, to Rome. So we're just going to get you in any boat we can, and you're going to be surrounded by all these idol worshipers. And sure enough, it ends up being towards the salvation of more people because of the story. And so I want to, what I want to do is I want to give you some thoughts from this story. I, I might even ask that you kind of hang in the story over the summer. There's so many unique parts of this um, at the end of it, I want to read the, the very end of it. Well, I'll, I'll save that. But here, a couple thoughts. Providence, okay? Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's God that directs his steps. Uh, consider today how much your faith has grown being with each other over these last uh, few months. Um, has it gotten to the place where you're absolutely okay and you believe that Although you're going to work hard and be diligent, that at the end of the day, God really does have an ordained plan for your life. Um, so don't miss that point. Secondly, um, what about being saved? Like, what, what if that was actually the thing that we hung our hat on the most and we went? At the end of the day, I'm so thankful that God did reveal himself to me. I hope that some of you really do feel like during this time with these guys that 
Jesus is making sense to you. If it is, that's God revealing himself to you. And so I encourage you, don't hold out. Don't be superstitious. Don't just say, well, I'm going to be spiritual in my own way or I'll just piece together a little Buddhism, a little bit of this or a little Oprah. Um, consider what you've heard through the word of God. And if you go, you know, it always keeps making sense. Then I would encourage you, call out to God. Just say, I do ask for your saving grace in my life. And if you do that, tell the guys that you've been with. They're going to want to know. I mean, they've been praying for you. And there's been a providence of you even being in this group, guys. That, and I think you'll look back. I think all of us that have come to faith, we look back and we go, holy cow, I, I had no idea that when I was with those guys, that was how God was pursuing me. And the pursuit was to save you. He's trying to save you from yourself. He's trying to save you from the world. He's trying to rescue you out of sin and out of your worldview and out of your way of living and walking so that you can live a new life. So I would just encourage you, be maybe one of the last words I'd, I'd ask you to consider, let God save you. Don't, don't hold out. Uh, there's no point to it. And I think you, uh, for many of you, I'll just be like, I know for some of you have been listening to it, you might be going, I've, I've been believing for months. So I would just encourage you, have words with the big guy. If, if you plan on following him, go ahead and let him know your intentions, if you will, and then let the guys know around you. So it's his favor. Third, maybe consider the wins that we've talked about, about how God uses difficulty and headwinds to slow us down at times so that really cool stuff can happen. We've talked a lot about this uh, you know, over the, over the months, but here we have an actual story um, one of one of the buddies that's a part of our community here, he called me yesterday and he said, I, I got to tell you a cool story. This guy has had more health problems. He's got five kids, fantastic young guy, healthy. He gets triple pneumonia. He gets COVID. Uh, he got all sorts of stuff. All of his kids got, I mean, he just, he's been ravaged by sickness. And then he had to go have a uh, surgery on his throat because he was having trouble getting food down. And uh, so he was in his first physical therapy appointment, and he said that uh, he met the young lady that was helping him, and uh, she was asking, you know, what he does. He says, well, I kind of work for this thing called the Lantern Network in uh, downtown Alton. And she goes, oh, I know that. It's Post Commons. And he's like, oh, yeah, how do, you, how do you know them, and what have you, what have you heard about the Lantern? And she's like, well, uh, it's, like, changed our town. Like, uh, we keep hearing about what you guys are doing. And so my friend Taylor just got to share the whole story of the gospel with her. She had given up on church, and he just started talking about the kingdom. And, um, you know, sometimes I just feel like some of, some of the headwinds that we go through, guys, literally, if you really believe in the sovereignty of God, you almost should look forward to some headwinds. And if God is slowing you down in your business or with your health, don't just try to get through it and get past it and then try to get on to real life. Real life is in the midst of that stuff. And so pay attention to the winds. Everything is lost except people in the story. That's the last thing I would tell you. Everything is lost. The ship is lost. They lose all their food. They lose all their tackle. But what they have at the end of the day is people. And that's what you guys have with each other over the summer. You guys have each other. The church is not the building. It is not the leadership uh, at the church. The church is you guys. It's people. It's the assembly of God's people scattered and moved as missionaries all over the East Bay and wherever you've been listening to this from. You are the church. The very most important things to you this summer are your family, your close friends, the ones that God's called you to live and serve and love. And it includes some other men that aren't with you right now that God is sovereignly going to draw to you guys this summer. And so stay tuned. Keep your antennas up. Um, uh, live with the, the Middle Eastern idea of Ensalah as God wills it. And see every single day as a divine opportunity, guys, to watch God work in your life. And, uh, and I think when we come back together, it'll be some great stories. But... Uh, I really do encourage you to keep your houses open to each other this summer. Uh, vacation with each other. Uh, keep the golf going and the meals and the time in Scripture together. 
Um, you don't need anybody to lead you. You guys have everything you need for life and godliness according to the scripture. So when we are together and we do have leaders that help hold us together, that, that's gravy. That's uh, cherry on the top. But you have all that you need. So uh, go for it this summer. And uh, love you guys. It's been uh, a pleasure as always. So peace out.